Today's episode of The Mom Game is brought to you by our friends at Gateway Buick GMC at LBJ and Jupiter. I know that buying a car can be stressful, but not at Gateway because their slogan is Gateway's got it. And just what does that mean? Well, it means Gateway's got a wide selection of new Buicks, GMCs, and GM certified used vehicles, all competitively priced. Gateway's got it. In these busy times, you want a car dealer who makes things easy and convenient. Well, guess what? Gateway's got it. When you log on to gatewaybuickgmc.com, look for the shop, click drive button. This allows you to shop from the comfort of your home. And who doesn't want that? In fact, it's as easy as one, two, three. One, select your vehicle. Two, create your offer. Three, schedule your delivery. And on top of all this, Gateway Buick GMC offers complimentary car washes for life. So when you want a car dealer who has it all, Gateway's got it. You can find them online at gatewaybuickgmc.com or shop in person at LBJ and Jupiter. GMC, we are professional grade. Experience the new Buick. Welcome to episode 129 of The Mom Game. I'm Emily Jones. She is Julie Dobbs. Yep. We are together again. We are. So nice. It is nice. We got a special guest coming up a little bit later. Um, someone we're really excited about, a new partner here on the show. And she's a great story, period. Mm-hmm. Regardless of if she's a, a sponsor, partner, whatever, she's a great story. I think a lot of people will be able to relate. I completely agree. Um, so yeah, uh, super excited about having Melanie Cobb from Diva Lore on a little bit later. We got some stuff to talk about though today. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's get going with the, uh, the TMG news desk. And that's brought to us by our friends at early bird CBD, um, which, okay. I was, you know how me on social media, you did a post. Mm-hmm. Are you, is, are you not drinking this week? Um, I was trying. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that was Tuesday. Now it's Thursday. Things change. Uh, uh, Wednesday. But, I made it to Wednesday. Okay. And then I only had like a little bit. And it, it's, it was mostly, okay, so I'm trying to be, Kelly doesn't watch this. I'm trying to be his support system. Oh. Because he's really trying. Oh, and he's trying to not drink, period? No, just during the week. Like, okay. I think we've both decided, like- we just need to feel fresher and ready to go okay. in the mornings. And we just want to generally feel better. Like we're both trying to lose a little weight and it's all that is, is like a barrier. Okay. Um, and, but we aren't that hardcore to where like, if we go to dinner, I want to have a couple drinks. And yeah. so that's kind of where we're at. Like when we're just home, just hanging out, like there's no reason. Or if you have those drinks at dinner and then come home, don't sit there and drink by yourself for another two hours. Like he'll, he'll do that sometimes just watching a show, right? you know? And so it's just cutting out that stuff. Right. Um, nothing hardcore, but yes, I posted about early bird, uh, because I, I was sitting there like twiddling my thumbs. Like I would be pouring myself a glass of wine right now, but I'm trying not to, what can I do? And I thought about early bird. Okay. And so early bird to the rescue. And it does, so, okay. I'm so glad you brought that up because for me, that glass of wine or two at the end of the day is, it is that the, the signal in my brain. Now you've, you've yeah. you can relax yeah. now that that means you don't have shit to do. You've got everything done. And so it, it, that's what tries to give you that, that chill feeling. Mm-hmm. And that's what early bird does is mm-hmm. give you that chill feeling like, Hey, you just not, relax. Yep. You got this. We made it this far. You You're, made it. Yeah. You just want to kind of relax a little bit. And yeah. then you have the bonus that it helps you sleep. Yes. So and you don't bonus. wake up feeling groggy. Yeah. Like if you had a few extra glasses of wine or whatever. Um, so no, that's been a wonderful partnership for us. I think we both love them. Yeah. Uh, I know I texted you yesterday. I'm like, can you bring me? I some, can see you like twitching from the other side. Can you bring me some gummies tomorrow? <laughs> um, because I am out, so I need to text or email Eric and yes, be like, can "We you, need to put. We need in, more. We, we need, need more." To put in they went over order. great at our um, the Dub launch party. Yep. Um, you know, I, a couple of people that we gave them to are like, yep, in, in Big on fans. these. I have a friend who remember the girl I went on vacation with. She's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm in. So it really is just like a great, like chill out mm-hmm. reward at the end of the day. So, mm-hmm. um, thanks to early bird for being a great sponsor. The first, uh, order is 15, 20% off. Yeah. It's a discount. Like There's yep. a discount early bird CBD.com slash TMG, uh, life changing products for, for, for Julie and myself. Um, yes. Okay. What did we say we were going to talk about first? Tom Brady. Yeah, there's a news desk. Yeah, news desk. Very newsy. Sportsy vibes. Yeah. Um, so he was absent from training camp, Bucks training camp for like 11 days. Mm-hmm. And then he comes back. 
And this is a little bit, you know, this was from earlier in the week, but I just thought it was so interesting Mm -hmm. because everyone's trying to figure out where he's been. There's like the masked dancer or singer. What the rumors? I think it, the masked singer, like there's rumors that he legitimately, and people are believing this. I am in total denial that there's any way Tom Brady missed 11 days of training camp to be on the mass singer. Okay. So he has his deal to be an announcer for Fox, right? Which right? And that's the network. And it's so on. that's the affiliation. That's why people are thinking this because maybe Fox says like, Hey, we, we're going to give you part a of the deal. ton of money. We'll give you some of it up front. If you come and do this masked singer but thing, don't, they th- don't you think that Fox would work around and, and shoot this like long before training camp starts? That's what I'm not understanding. So there's this huge mystery and, yeah. and part of it is that he's the mass singer. I'm like, this is so ridiculous. I guess we'll find out right. eventually. But the thing I love the most, and we've got a clip of it. The thing I love the most is his, when he finally did address the media, <laughs> it was so good. And he, well, first of all, he does look really, is that what really fit people look like? I was thinking maybe the mask he looked left it. Stop it. Like, <laughs> stop. Now you're ridiculous. I know. You're so ridiculous. <laughs> it was the mask. He just smushed his face a little bit. I mean, 11 mm. days in a mask. Stop. Okay. Stop right now. <laughs> okay. So anyway, he does his press conference and they're asking him like, you know, where have you been? And it's been hard to be away. And basically he just says this. It's all personal. You know, everyone's got different situations they're dealing with. So we all had really unique challenges to our life. And, uh, you know, we're... I'm 45 years old, man. There's a lot of shit going on. So, you know, you just got to try to figure out light the best you can. And, um, you know, it's a uh, continuous process. So, so yeah, I mean, I've never. OK, first of all, I don't relate to Tom Brady at all. Like he's, uh, you know, fucking rich as shit and he's married to a hot supermodel and perfect life and. You know, did I mention he's really a lot of money, <laughs> very uh, incredible athletic honors, like all the things. I mean, he's, there's very little that I can relate to Tom Brady with. I'm 45 this, years old, man. I got a lot of shit going on. I'm 45, man. I don't know. I got okay. a lot of shit going on. Like that to me, I'm like, I've never, I've never felt. Do you need 11 days? I've never felt more like Tom Brady in my life. There you go. And I'm like, yes, listen to this man. He's 45. So when you hit 45, we all get He's 11, got a lot of shit going on. We get an 11 on. day respite I'm from life. I'm effing 45 I like that. right now. I want 11 days. Yeah. Let's go. Well, you can take it. Okay. It's the Tom Brady law. It's, <laughs> it's the Tom, write it in. Oh my all gosh, of you I employers just, in the I, calendar. And I loved it. I loved it. And I'm not a huge Tom Brady fan. I, I respect what he's done and accomplished and whatever. And he's, you know, he's kind of fun to look at sometimes. And, Mm -hmm. um, but I just thought good for him. There's a lot of shit. So his whole sentence, like I, like we just heard, there's a lot of shit going on. So you just have to try and figure out life the best you can. Yes. You know, it's a continuous process. That's how he answered the question (laughs) of where he is. So that to me doesn't sound like masked singer. That sounds like there's some shit going on. Or listen, I, I, I feel like there might be, I just got a big fat contract with Fox and now I'm came out of, you know, whatever, whenever but it I sounded return- like when you hear the sound bite, I it know. sounded like personal and he got very like introspective and right. I wonder if they're having trouble. Oh, stop. I don't Maybe know. Maybe so. I don't know. I don't, I mean, she didn't let- want him to go back. I mean, she was very vocal. I feel have like you, in, in your conversations <laughs> We've been with texting. Giselle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she, she did a, it, everything she said was like I don't know maybe I just interpreted it wrong right. but I, every time I'd read a quote about her her talking about it it just sounded like it was time and she was ready I know what it's like it's like it sucks being married to somebody that has in that has to be gone all the time and yeah. work all the time and you've got your kids and you just want to have family time and you can't and even if you're Giselle you probably get lonely yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah uh, who knows my whole we'll never th- know. Th- we'll never know. Or maybe we will. But my thing is, I just, I just made me like Tom Brady a little yeah, bit more. Because it was good. I feel it like was he's great. Speaking for all of us. Yeah. And uh, he did get into the preseason. He played in their finale, the their exhibition games, finishing six of eight for 44 yards. So he's, he's Tom Brady. In he's his one be series. Just fine. So he just can fine. throw the ball, I guess. They yeah, let him play one can. series. Preseason is. Um, 
Did Weird. you watch any preseason? No. It's so ridiculous. Preseason's dumb. I'm over it. Um, <laughs> college football's coming back. And that was our preseason football talk. <laughs> and that was our preseason football Emily talk. Emily doesn't want to do it. I don't. <laughs> like, oh God, I was going to break play? down the Cowboys' cuts. Who's going to play we're left at? tackle for the Cowboys? Yeah, it's a big deal. Listen, I, we're, we're here to give our hot sports opinions and give like updates of the I've highlights been, I've been of watching, the sports Let me tell you world. something. And, and I have thoughts. That's okay. All right. Then you go on Nate's podcast and you okay. talk about those okay. Cowboys thoughts with him. All right. Let's talk about what's on <laughs> your feed. Dismissing me. I am dismissing you. If it's Cowboys talk, You're I'm fine. dismissing you. You're fine. But, but I mean, when the season starts game one, I mean, we're breaking that shit down after week one against Tampa Bay. I mean, please. I Dak mean, first Tom. Who's the going to win? Singer. Like, yeah, it's going to be fun. Well, I'm I'm, I am in on talking football when there's actual games that matter, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Like sp- college football starting. I'm yes. going to Lubbock this weekend. You are for a game? Yep. Okay. What Ends are you doing? Up. Are you like uh, flipping the coin or no. doing something <laughs> no. awesome? Going as a guest. You are. Yeah. Okay. You're not going to go get in the middle of the huddle and... Pump up the football team like I you mean, did. I mean, if Joey McGuire asked me to. Joey McGuire sure probably will. will. He's yeah. going to hear you. Emily, give us our pep talk. Yeah. I mean, I can fire some shit up. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. go. You yeah. So I'm super excited. I am super excited for football. I'm excited for meaningful football, which is coming. Yeah. Yeah. So you're just going as, who are you going with? A fan. Um, I'm going with a couple of guys who actually used to play football for tech a long time ago, back when I was there, and their families. Oh, fun. Yeah. Okay, good. One of them's my soon to be neighbor and another one um i've, I've known we're guests of the camp bring the kids we are bringing the kids okay yeah fun so you have a little bit of rangers break ish yeah yeah i do i have a little bit of a rangers break ish good uh one week i've uh been not very many games to go yeah yeah they're rangers they're still playing they're Baseball. still trucking along they are they are um okay one th- uh well we're gonna do what i want to save what's on your feet for last okay Sports courts. I mean, we just sports so hard talking Cowboys. Sort of. You didn't let me. But. Um, <laughs> um, but I, this is something you're going to love talking about. Okay. Because it's tennis. I know. You Emily came tennis. in. She slammed me against the wall and said, Whoa. let's talk about tennis. Whoa. Not like that. Wow. That's <laughs> not sure if you're aware of what kind of visual comes said, into my head when yeah, you say that's you slam me, me up against that's the wall. You. That's your own problem. I don't have to change the way I speak just because of you and your dirty mind. <laughs> Clean your shit up. Sorry, I can't help it. I can't help it. I should just stop talking about it. I really did not slam me against the wall. But I can't uh, turn it off. Turn it off. Stop thinking about this. This is really weird. I'm going to walk out. I'm Stop sorry. thinking about it. Okay. Take one of those gummies out of your purse. <laughs> Eat it and chill. What's wrong with me? God, love it. Okay. I feel violated. <laughs> you should. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't help. I can't. I can't. I can't okay. help it. Tennis. I can't. I'm gonna. I need to stop admitting it. I just can't help it. <laughs> okay, tennis. Do you need me to do the rest of the show? <laughs> tennis. Serena Effing Williams. Holy shit! I'm not into tennis. I am so all in on this last U.S. Open thing mm-hmm. US with Open her. Thing. Yeah. She's first of all. I just think she's so amazing. Like. I have the biggest like crush on her, like sports crush. Like I just business crush, woman so crush. So what like, did you see that made you feel all the feels? Well, I've always thought she was a total badass. Yeah. And then when I started, I turned on and I didn't even intentionally turn on this match, but then I just got sucked into it where I'm, and I'm like, I'm so invested in her winning this whole thing. Yeah. And I, now I'm in, yeah. I'm sucked in. Cause she, I mean, I've always thought she was greatness, but I've never paid great attention to tennis. I mean, maybe like Wimbledon and wh- whatever, but, um, I mean, I am so in on her. Like, ah, yeah, God, she's because a stud. this is likely her final grand slam tournament of her career, which is crazy Such a stud. because she said in the Vogue magazine, article seemed like a month ago or something like that, that she's evolving away from tennis. It reminded me of 
was it Gwyneth Paltrow that talked about uncoupling, conscious uncoupling? <laughs> like, why do we have to get so weird? Just say you want to retire or just say you right. want to get divorced, but she's evolving. But I guess if you're Serena Williams, like you can say that. Yes. Because tennis oh, is you. Like that's your whatever. identity. And maybe it does take an evolution to get away yeah. from it. She can say whatever she, she wants. She can say whatever she's she wants. Amazing. So yeah. I mean, obviously after having babies and everything, like she's talked about the struggle, she's been fighting injuries um, all of the various things. And so there is a, a lot of fun attention on her right now because this could be the final grand slam. I was bummed. I was at a thing last night and didn't know this was happening and I saw it was happening, but the thing I was at was something I couldn't yeah. leave from and turn on the TV, but I hated missing it. Yeah. But even Kelly was texting me and he doesn't watch tennis yeah. and he's like, my Oh kids my God, were into it. that was just some of the best tennis I've yeah. ever seen. Yeah. So she beat, uh, the second ranked like player, the, the two Annette, who yeah. I haven't even heard of. Annette, Con- that's the thing with women's tennis, Contavit. Contavit. Um, someone can be second in the world, third in the world, fourth ah, in the world, I mean, and I'm I don't, so you don't know who they are. But, when does she um, play again next? Like, I need to know. It's usually every other day Okay. so I'd well, imagine. Friday night, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm excited to, to follow her, and it, you know what? If Serena can go out in her final Grand Slam and pull people into the game like you, yep. she's still doing her freaking oh. job because that's what she's done her whole career. Um, and tennis needs it. And it's yeah. also just awesome seeing a freaking badass mom doing that. She's ridiculous. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, catch Serena Williams. She's pretty good at tennis and stuff. Um, okay, uh, what's on your feed before we get to our guest? I mm-hmm. saw this this morning and it made me so happy. Oh yeah, this was cool. So are you familiar with Edwin Diaz? A little bit. So he's a closer for the Mets. He's a total badass. And he comes, you know, when pitchers come in, relievers come in or when they're warming up or whatever, just like walk up songs for batters, they have like intro music. And we've had, you know, some really iconic ones over the years. Um, Does that always happen? Yes. Okay. Who was it for? Who had the inner Sandman? Oh, Ted, if you're listening, get in my ear. Yeah. Inner Sandman. Um, God. Any, like exit light mark, wasn't CJ enter. No, no, no. This is not for us. Oh, okay. He's like one of the best closers of all time. And now I'm an idiot and I can't think of who it is. Cause his name has totally escaped me, but whatever. Yeah. So there's been some iconic ones over the years, right? This, in my opinion is so incredibly amazing. So there's a song called narco, which I Mariano had, Rivera. It wasn't Mariano Rivera. It did not have inner Sandman. Oh, type in inner Sandman. That's what I was trying to do. Um, why can't I think of this? It's going to make me crazy. Mariana Rivera did not come out to enter Sandman. That's, it's going to make me crazy. To ice opposing hitters at Yankee Stadium, a song would blare in the PA while Rivera made a slow aggress out to the mound from the bullpen. Metallica. Egress. <laughs> Stop it. This why do I reading things live. Metallica's enter Sandman. Okay. Was it was? And this is the internet. <sighs> okay. D- Take it up this with this person. No, you're right. You're right. It I'm was just the g- perfect sonic descriptor for what would become okay. of you if you faced his late inning cutter. Why did I not think? Okay. What, what is I'm egress? Con- I don't like not knowing words. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you were so confident when you corrected me. <laughs> electronic grass. <laughs> um, wait. Okay. Um, best clothes. This is going to make me crazy. Closers. Here we go. Of all time. Um, egress while we wait the action of going out of or leaving a place yes trevor yeah. hoffman trevor effing hoffman now what was his song now <laughs> i've got them all jacked up <laughs> trevor hoffman hell's bells okay okay so it was the song that you had wrong it was the song i mean i was, think, I was thinking of trevor yes. yes okay so mariana rivera inner sandman trevor hoffman hell's bells <sighs> Now that we've got that, done. Yep, now there's we've got a song. That you've learned something today. Yes. Listening. So uh, Edwin Diaz comes out to Narco, which I had never heard this song, Narco. Yeah. It's very catchy. Yeah. All right. We're going to start rolling the clip here.
This to me was just amazing. So he comes out to the song every time, right? Mets are really good right now. Like, you know, one of the top teams in the national league. And then they bring in Timmy trumpet, I guess yeah. is his name. The actual effing Trump, Trump, Trump ball. <laughs> the actual trumpet player who plays the trumpet on the song and they bring him on the field. Oh, I didn't realize it was the actual one that plays on the song. Yes. And they bring him on the oh field gosh. and he's playing it live. Wow. It was awesome. I mean, to me, that is just effing amazing. Yeah. And good on the Mets for shaking things up, doing something fun and not being, you know, so worried about, well, what's this going to affect that and blah, blah, blah. Like, they had a moment. They're like, we're going to make the most of this. We've got Timmy Trumpet. The place is effing packed. We're good. Edwin Diaz is ridiculous. The song is amazing. And we're going to trick this thing up and make it legendary. And that's exactly what it was. And let me tell you something. Listen, baseball. Listen. Pay attention. Shit like this is cool. And it, people it's very cool. like it. Yeah. It's and very we need cool. cool things that people I, like in our game. We're going to probably see more of that type of thing in the playoffs, I would guess. God, I hope because so. Because it, yeah. it felt like playoffs. Like, you heard that, and it was like, oh, my God, this yep. is why baseball's great. You yes. know? And you can't you can't get that feeling very easily. It, it, it just was a really cool moment. Um, yeah. In a long <laughs> season, like, do stuff here and there to to – Spice things up. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it was very God, cool. It was so cool. Diaz sat down the Dodgers in order after that and preserved I mean, a 2 1 victory for the Mets. Listen, I felt like in that moment, I could have struck out the Dodgers in order. <laughs> there you go. I mean, I was so All geeked of the up. Feels. Like, oh, yes. Yep. Just- yep. Trumpet left the ballpark to catch a flight to Singapore. Oh, unfortunately. Well. But Diaz said the Australian musician could return to Queens again this season. Oh, guarantee he's in there in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. God, you would have to I think, mean, just, and now other people are going to think like, okay, I need, can I have live music? I know. Can I have a violin? I or know. like, I mean, can you imagine? God, I'm just yeah. thinking like, God, what a badass Edwin Diaz must be like walking out of that bullpen. I mean, he must, that, I mean, that has to be some kind of high. He's got to be on to walking be out the like moments of his life. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, that was cool. I was glad you brought that to my attention. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay. Are we ready for? Our very special guest. We are. Let's do it. And now for our special guest for this week. If you listened to the show last week, you heard us talk about this wonderful woman. And now she is here on set with us. It is Melanie Cobb. Hello. Melanie, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, this was important to us because we can talk about a company and why we like it. But I think when somebody Mm -hmm. sees the face that goes along with it and hears the story of why it started... Um, it's even more impactful that and you're a mom just like us and <laughs> the hot mess that's associated with Yes, it. you are um, a hot makes mess. It special. Or um, we like to say shit show. Yeah. Do you fall into that category? It's like I feel like it's one that. step yeah. past, past hot I'm mess. Past the shit show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're even there, past the shit show. One. There's, one. there's a step that has no name. That's where I am. Oh, I've, I've, like, been, I've been at that level yeah, for yeah. quite just some like time. Just like a dark abyss. Yes. 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 There's no there's no category. It's just, yeah. It, you know, you know, that falls into that. Like, yeah. Well, I want to talk to you about like your story and how what? everything started. But but first of all, can you just give us an overview of Devalor Wellness and yeah. what you are doing now? Yeah. So I... Um, Went to PA school, loved it, um, wasn't sure what I wanted to do when I grew up. Mm -hmm. Um, And so kind of stumbled upon orthopedic surgery and did that for 10 years and still doing that part time. Um, But just realized like surgery is just so difficult um, on home life. And while I love operating and my boss and like everyone I work with, it's just I love my family more. Uh Um, And I just wasn't getting to see them. So I sat down and a year ago. And it was like, what do I like to do? Like, what are, what in medicine is 
fulfills me or whatever. And so um, I realized that there, I felt like there was a void in the market of how do I take care of my skin without spending five grand and dumping a bunch of artificial chemical, you know? So I felt like there was a, a place that I could fill to educate, to make a specific plan for, you know, I've got $300. What can you do for me? Yeah. I just felt like I was so intimidated by the industry because I didn't want to spend $2,000 a month, but I didn't know, or maybe I was too lazy to figure out like what options there were. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to provide that space um, to come in and say like, Hey, I'm tired. I don't want to look tired. So I've got $300. What can you do for me or whatever? So that's kind of, I want to be approachable. Um, and, um, also like the medical wellness. I didn't go the route of med spa quote unquote. Um, because I feel like for me, I would like to swing it to like women's health in the long run. Um, and on that take, like, you know, you have a baby, you have two follow-ups and then you're lost in the system. Um, and as an adoptive mom, I was even more so lost in the system. So to provide a space where it's like no judgment, you know, mm -hmm. like mental health is a big factor in life and being a mom. Um, and I just felt like there was nowhere for me to go. Mm -hmm. so, so tell us about your kids. Yeah. Um, so I've got three very lovely individuals. Um, my oldest is four, four and a half. She'll tell you. Um, our middle is about to be, he'll be three next week. And then the baby is 17 months. Okay, and then so, the adopt you yeah, mentioned we have two biological, which are the two oldest, and then we have um, the youngest is adopted. It's an open adoption. Okay, um, what so, led you to that? So you know, honestly, I wish I had like this moment of clarity, um, but I just felt like we were supposed to have another kid, and for some reason, it just felt weird to like talk about trying or getting pregnant again, and so it just felt like a calling. Um, we have a, a really close friend that was adopted um, through Gladney, and she is just a big part of our life, and her story is really special because her family also has biological siblings, and they're all really close in age. So for she was kind of my moment. My father-in-law also um, grew up in an orphanage in Itasca, so that was another part of it, too. Where's Itasca? <laughs> Oh, like you wouldn't, it's outside of Fort Worth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. You Never wouldn't go there that. unless you wanted to be there. But so he was in the children's home at like age four on because his mother died of cancer. So um, I just, it was something to me. I was like, I feel like we're supposed to have more kids, but I don't feel like I'm supposed to have them. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was really just a calling and it's a shit show. Uh -huh. Adoption's a shit show, um, but the greatest shit show we've ever been a part of. Yeah, and then what is that? It, tell me about an open adoption. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't so, know that I've ever known anyone that's done it that. It, like, swings the pendulum back and forth um, over decades of adoption. Like, you know, this big world of secrecy. You don't know who your parents are, biological parents. Um, your adoptive parents don't tell you you're adopted, whatever. Now the research shows it's better for the kids to know they were adopted, to know that they have a biological family, and to know who they are. Um, so our daughter will know who her biological mother is, who her biological siblings and half siblings are. And if she chooses to like, so we have a contract with the, the birth mom that we will see her every year until our daughter's 18. Um, and, you know, we'll figure out what that looks like. But um, they're in Missouri. So, you know, we went this summer of our first visit um, and got, it was really cool. We got to see her biological sister and her two half brothers. And there's no, like, secrecy. You know, it's not like, is my mom the person next to me in the grocery right. store? Yeah. You know, like, I am her mom. But she also has a biological mom. And, you know, I call it 50-50. You know, she made her. She's the reason that she's on this this earth and my husband and I, our job is to, you know, raise her. So I think it's for us very important that she knows her biological family and it's not this world of mystery. Yeah. So, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, Good it creates you. a real big cluster, um, <laughs> you know, cause like now my four year old's like, I want to be her only sister. And I'm like, well, you're not. Yeah. Um, and you have so, to try to explain that yeah. to a little kid. Right. And so you did the adoption when you were going through the Career yeah. change so or where I, did that all come The into adoption play? made me career change uh -huh. because I obviously had two biological kids had taken, you know, three months maternity leave with both. Um, and they told us it was supposed to be two years, um, quote unquote, 18 to 24 months for a placement. Um, and we got picked in 36 days. Um, and so we had orthopedics had just gone into private practice and it was like a crazy time and I couldn't take a maternity leave financially uh -huh. 
or, you know, we were just not in a place within the practice to do so either. So my boss graciously let me have the two months that we were stuck in Missouri trying to get her home. Mm -hmm. Um, But then, I mean, I went to work the day we got home um, on like two hours of sleep. Mm. So that, the insomnia mixed with the chaos was what got me. Yeah. Okay. At rock bottom. And how's it going? Much better now. Yeah. Um, You know, now I feel like I've gotten a better grasp of work-life balance. Uh Um, And so now I'm in orthopedic surgery two days a week and I, it's crazy and hectic and whatever. Um, And then I get to go to my office and it's, you know, Relaxing. Focused on self care. Yeah. You know? So I hopefully, you know, advocate to people like counseling was a huge part of my turnaround. Uh-huh. My counselor, like people told me to go to therapy for years and I ignored them. <laughs> um, when my parents separated, everybody was like, you have to go to therapy, you have to go to therapy. But it took a friend of mine who was in therapy to be like, you really do need to go. And I was like, well, she's doing it. So she's not mm-hmm. just telling me I need to do it. And mm-hmm. I listened and like, that's been the best thing. My counselor is great. I have like a, fitness coach that is incredible too, that like is very faith based. Um, and so that's been a big part of it. Our church is orphan care centered. So like we have this adoption community, um, that helps too, cause adoption is mm-hmm. hard. And like, mm-hmm. we didn't know anybody who had adopted. Yeah. So, probably so many questions yeah. all yeah. the like, time. How do I handle this? What do I say when they ask yeah. me this? I yeah. Mean, even like the terminology is different, you yeah. know, like just educating the general population on like, I am her mom. Mm-hmm. When people ask about her mom. I'm like, that's me. It's important to have somebody that can coach you on that. And I love that you found people that can help you with these pockets of life, but at the same time, you're here now to help people with this pocket of life when it comes to, yeah. Yeah. When it comes to self care and, and their skin and what to do and all of that. So I just want to talk about that a little bit more with you. Um, so say that there's somebody like I told you I was this way. It was like, I have (laughs) tried this. I've tried that. I've done a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Like with my husband and my career, like finances are like this, like sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not like, depends how much I'm working as a freelance person. We get it. We get it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I I have not had a steady, good routine for like years, like some people. Right. So I came to you and I'm like, what do I do here? And and what do I need? So is that what you want? Like what, what, I think it's, what do you want to tell the people right. about who, who should come find you want to hear? Yeah. Um, I mean, the biggest thing is like, you don't have to come in and what I've learned, you don't have to come in and tell me what you want. Right. Mm-hmm. The point of it is to come in do a consult and I can tell you, and we can talk about it. Like it's not, you have to call them and say, I want, you know, this, this, and this, like, that's not really the point. If you mm-hmm. know what you want, sure. But I think that that's where a lot of people don't make the phone call. Cause they're like, well, I don't know what I want. And I'm like, that's the point. Mm-hmm. Like come in and be like, here I am. Here's what I've got financially. Cause you do have to budget. I yeah. mean, you know, don't not feed your family because you're buying $200 face cream, you know, <laughs> like you have to be respectful of the budget and your family's budget. But like at the same time, a chemical peel is super easy and you can swing that, you know? Right. So things like that. I think I want, I want people to feel like they can come in and just be like, I don't know what I want. Mm-hmm. And that's what I prefer. And that's what so. the free consultation yeah. will yeah. do. So if somebody is listening to this and is interested, they reach out to you, Yeah, they can get a free consultation. And I then- even have my first, uh, mom game. On. Yeah. Um, and like lives out of Fort Worth, like lives, um, in Perfect. a different town. And so like, it can be done virtually. I get it. People have busy work schedules. Like you can't come in and have a consult and then come back and do whatever we decide on. You can do it over the phone. Like it's 2022. Mm-hmm. We have FaceTime. I love it. You're um, like, I'll make this work. Yeah. Cause I mean, I've had this schedule where I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can't make a hair appointment. No less a face appointment. Right. Um, so, you know, a lot of that can be done virtually the weekends. Like I can pick up a phone on Saturday. Yeah not that hard. Yeah. yeah. And I, I did the chemical peel and I love it. I'm not wearing any so, makeup today. And I feel like my skin it looks a good. amazing. Oh, refresh. When did you do um, it? So. Uh, last week. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, uh, like, and I could, I worked, I yeah. mean, it was no, There's I didn't no wear makeup time. that yeah. day. Yeah. Um, but then after that, it was like, I mean, there would be a, like a little bit of peeling here yeah. and there, but nothing noticeable. Um, it's yeah. nothing yeah. like they used to be, you know, like it's no. not intimidating. You're They're not going to awesome. shed like a snake. Like no, no one's really going to know. Yeah. And you can pretty much do all the things because you are, a licensed yeah. PA and you, yeah. you said something to us that I thought was interesting. Like in Texas, you don't have to have a medical background essentially to be an injector, nope. Nope. but you have one yeah. and yeah. we're talking about our yeah. faces oh, here. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. you could go into the, and we've, yeah. you could go into like a med spa or yeah. whatever and it's you don't ask questions. regulated yes. in the state of Texas. So you don't have to have any kind of like 
there's licensing within each category, but like you don't have to have had any medical schooling, which seems kind of crazy. Yeah. And, and we're all just like, get some about needles in your face. Yeah, I, don't, I don't even know your name, but shoot me up. Yes. Do it. Yeah. So, I mean, that was an important aspect. And honestly, my the girl that I trained with is outside of um, Atlanta. And she was just as much a life coach for my mental health crisis as she trained me to do be an injector, too. Because she was like, this is what you make it. Like, if you want to go inject and you don't know what you're doing, the state of Texas will let you which is crazy. But if you want to be the best of the best, like you have to train yourself. It's not Mm -hmm. like I learned how to do this in PA school. I mean, they don't even talk about things like this. So you have to like be an advocate for yourself as a provider um, and learn how to do it all on your own, Mm -hmm. which is, has advantages because you can learn how you want and from who you want. Uh, It's also very expensive. So when people are like, Oh, that face cream is really expensive. I'm like, so so was my education. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, but there's a conference in Dallas next week. And I mean, it's like several thousand dollars to attend. Wow. So I mean, you but know, it's important. Yeah. yeah it's so, important for you. Yeah, it's important you. for me, like to, to be the best I can be and know what I'm doing and not love just willy nilly. And she so. is at y'all's disposal. People like Here call Melanie. She will yes. hook you up. One, one more thing before yeah. we let you go. Because she has to yeah. <laughs> shoot me up. Um, <laughs> I yeah, love to do today. <laughs> I love the the name and the story yeah. behind the name because we were talking when we were, you know, getting to know you and the business and we were writing up copy points and all that kind of stuff. And Julie and I are like, we don't really know how to pronounce it. Yeah. And so then we ask how to pronounce it. You send me a voice memo. Yeah. Um, so it's Divalor. Yeah, it's Divalor. So my family is Italian. So I wanted that to be kind of a aspect of it. Um, and then it stands for self-worth. Um, you know, I have a great support system. My husband's incredible. Not everybody has that. Um, and not everybody has the people to like put them in their place and be like, you need to get your stuff together. So I would love to be that for people, you know, like you, when you're at rock bottom, like you don't know how to get yourself out. You need Mm -hmm. people to get you out of the ditch. And so, um, that's another thing. Like we do discounts for like adoptive and foster families too. Um, because that's, you know, kind of my cool. thing. So more than happy to like work with those communities. Cause like there's stressors that like you didn't even see coming that hit you like a hurricane in that right realm of life. So, um, like I said, I've, you know, for me, it was the self-worth aspect that was important in the name. Yeah. I think it's awesome. And I love, I, it love I love your story. I love the fact that you're so open about it. I mean, the first time we talked, you're like, yeah. And then I was yeah. like sleeping in an operating room and woke up and was like, holy mm-hmm. shit, I better do something about mm-hmm. this. You know, like sleep is really necessary, but everybody's like, why don't you sleep? And I was like, oh, you're right. Cause it's optional. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was like, I would love to sleep. I just don't. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I learned. And like, that's a big thing, like counseling too. Like everybody was like, go to a sleep study, do that. And I was like, that's not the problem. My issue is the anxiety and like the life of being a mom who everyone needs me all the time mm-hmm. um, at work and at home. So like, it wasn't a sleep study. wasn't going to fix my problem. Right. Like it was I like needed a life to get needed. my head in the right space and figure yep. out like needed to change them. No, I can't do that today. Like I, and my husband's so great about it, but like there are days where I'm like, I need to lay down for like 10 minutes and he's like, got it. And he takes these three wild children and is like, we're going to the park. So like I had never been in that place before. I felt like guilty of yes. asking him to do that. I mean, he's their parent. He's more right. than happy to help. But I was you just so tell, prideful. We have to tell husbands what we they need. They don't see what we see. And like <laughs> biggest life advice, just tell them. Yep. They just have to be told. And usually they will and do they it. And they will do it. But yeah. yeah, I just was so like, I'm such a martyr. And I was like, I got this. I don't need help. And like, you do need help. Right. There's no reason you to just be that help. way. Yeah. yeah. Why well, I love that? that you took so. the huge first step, which yes. is to figure out career wise, yeah. what and you can it. do, fun. how you can help people yeah. then in effect that is helping you maintain yeah. the work-life balance yeah. thing. That's yeah. huge. I wouldn't be a good state. Yeah. Long, yeah. And we're so happy that, that we've all connected because yeah, you are our people and yeah. our people also need this help. Yeah. <laughs> we all gotta look good. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yep. So thank you well, for trusting so, in us to help yes, spread the word. We are word. so grateful Thanks. for your partnership. We yeah, are excited you. to get you the word out about Got Divalor it. and mm-hmm. um, we'll have the link on our link tree to your website, but right fast it's divalormedicalwellness.com. Yep. And, and you can like, if you know, internet is not your thing or you don't want to book online, you can call or text too. Um, Cause you can directly book on the website or you can just reach out to me and we can always book it that way. Okay. Awesome. So, awesome. We are good. so excited. Yep. Me too. Uh, okay. We're going to end the show like we always do because we have to, 
piece it out. We got to piece it out. So, um, Melanie Cobb, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks to D Valor. We're excited uh, about, me. about the partnership with you. Okay. That is going to do it for this week's show. On the count of three, mom game out. One, two, three. Mom, mom game, game out. out.